Frank, I do apologize because communications with us, you and I, broke down before the show. Um, but uh, we are going to hop to the Scotch part of the show. Um, and uh, hopefully we're going to do some tastings, Eric and I. Um, if you know what we're drinking and you have your opinions, that'd be great. And if you happen to have something uh, you'd like to take a sip of, that would be fine too. And again, I do apologize. I saw the email I was trying to send you did not get sent about uh, four o'clock today. Um, again, it's all good. Uh, it's all good. So the show was originally around um, Kentucky and uh, North Carolina basketball. So today we're going to be Perfect. drinking some bourbons, and I do have a lot of North Carolina as well. Um, for those who are watching, I, uh, I do apologize. I may not be drinking, well, I will not be drinking all of my drink. I'll be having some sips. And uh, the first bourbon that I have here is a Woodford Reserve. Eric, is that what you were able to get as well? Oh, it went the full size. I just got the little 50 <laughs> milliliter. I'm in a oh, oh, oh. Eric's a serious, uh, you're a serious hey. man. I like my uh, I like my Manhattans and a uh, good bourbon now and then. So absolutely, it's not going to go to waste. So now, uh, what I have here is someday this pandemic that we were just talking about is going to be over, and hopefully we can do this show in studio. So I will be also creating a uh, me, my Scotch, and I house blend of the various things we try during the show, as long as they're uh, not flavored. I think that's a little uh, obtuse. So. Uh, I'm, right, I'm going to come right back. Give me a minute. Give me, a, and I can help. Okay. All right. Ah. Now uh, I know this one, so I'm going to go ahead and add my little bit of water to this before we start. Ah. ah. Oh, and. It looks like I am now the host. So before we uh, do this, I'd like to, I know I'm going to blindside. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to blindside both you guys here um, with uh, the fashion portion of the show. Again, we're dealing with uh, guys out of Kentucky and Duke, and these are two guys um, who I think have fantastic but different styles. And we'll start with Mr. Tyler Hero and what he was wearing when he got drafted. Um, now, obviously, this guy has a, I hope you've seen my screen. Oh, no, not yet. Uh, you'll see Tyler Hero here in a beautiful flowered uh, jacket with a nice. Nice, nice watch. Just let your guys input on Mr. Hero's uh, early career attire. Pretty loud. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I couldn't pull. I couldn't pull that off. I know that. No, oh, I know. I, I couldn't pull it off. I <laughs> might be able to pull it off if it was silk. You know, yeah. yes, land yes. color, right? So a good call. Yes. But speaking of silk and the loud color, when you're walking on South Street in your Tyler Hero, that is exactly what you do. I, I guess I wouldn't even try to pull off when I was twenty, uh, but. He does a good job with the skinny jeans and the wide open shirt. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah. Sure, if you're a, what's, what is he, 20, 21 year old NBA star living in Miami? Yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Now, this next gentleman, so it's out of Duke, and uh, when he entered the NBA, he entered in a much, much more reserved way. Mr. Oh, yeah. Kyrie Irving. Um, now him, tip, typical, very nice outfit, completely uh, conservative. But this is your big day, and we know how big some of these guys go. I, I personally think he could have had a nicer tie knot. Somebody could have helped him come up with something a little better and more uh, unique. And he, he looks like a Robin Hood employee. <laughs> yes, there you go. Um, <laughs> but. Kyrie uh, eventually grew, uh, and uh, this outfit, if Kyrie Irving is listening to the show, I want this jacket. I think mm -hmm. I can wear this jacket. Um, he's got great socks, and uh, 
I like his shoes. Thoughts? I'm with you on the jacket. By the way, do you want to know what I'm drinking? Can you guess what I'm drinking? Uh, Canadian whiskey. I can't see it on my little screen. It's like a Jose Cuervo. There yes, it is. Eric and I go back a very long way, and all I can say is Eric knows why I don't drink tequila. Yeah, if, if this show was named uh, Me, My Tequila, and I, I would not appear. Um, I, it, I've had a rough history with tequila, and nobody can attest to it as well. So. Yes. yes. Uh, for me, it was uh, when I was in the younger days, it was, uh, what's it called? Uh, Jeepers Creepers. Real sweet alcohol. Mad Dog um, 2020? What, what, what? Mad Dog 2020? No, not Mad Dog 2020. Uh, yeah, you know what? That, yes, okay. yes. Thank you, sir. Well, that stuff was mean. Yeah, yeah. Before we get to our full-on alcohol conversation, I have one more <laughs> picture I'd like to share. And again, it's Kyrie. And this is my favorite outfit that uh, I'm sharing <laughs> today. Um, I got red. He's got red. He figures out a way to make his red shoes work with that beautiful tartan scarf. Um, he grew into his uh, fashion, I must say. Final thoughts red on that fashion? Red works. Red works. Red work. Yeah, again, I'm, uh, I'm pretty conservative by my attire, so I, I couldn't pull off the red shoes, but uh, yeah, he, he looks sharp. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, he does conservative with the splash there, and that's that's really what I like. It's like yeah, just a little bit. There you go. Yeah, this is not a MAGA hat. It's a CFL <laughs> hat. Just want to make sure we make that distinction. Good. It's a red hat, and the microphone's red too. So <laughs> okay, I'll hold it again. Too. I'm not surprised. I really like it because I know it well. Um, how's your Woodford treating you there, Eric? Nice and smooth. Thanks. And Frank the Cuervo is working for you? Yeah, yeah. A cap full of that will keep me running for a while. Excellent. Now, I'm like you. Now, by cap full, I mean this cap. Oh, see. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought you meant like a cap full because I. Yeah, no, I meant a cap full. If I drink that much, you won't see me. I'll be out of the shot. Because I myself also have a tiny little. Um, capacity but i do love the flavor so i have a second bourbon i'm going to take a sip of and a little try here elijah craig which i always pronounce crag because i don't know why and i went with the small batch eric likewise oh small batch. wonderful wonderful yeah. good for you guys but this is oh, a new one for me Ob, so i'm uh, i'm curious oh oh this is this is a great one okay good up before here you can tell it's a great one by how long he's got it tipped. Yes, this one has. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that one didn't get vertical very quickly. That one definitely has served me well over the year. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. And this one I can do without the water. Oh, you're right. That's excellent. Definitely not as sweet, but wow, full flavor. I think it's they excellent. call that nutty. Excellent. Good, good. I'm glad I can expose you to something you enjoy. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think you've uh, you've made me a new Elijah Craig fan. So, uh, yeah, this is excellent. Yes, and you, and you got the small batch, which I think is a, the first time I had uh, Elijah was uh, my friend's annual um, barbecue. He has it the week before Memorial Day here. So it's still a little chilly. Somebody brought that bottle, and I mean, in 10 minutes, everybody, it was gone. It was, it was one of those bottles where everyone was like, give me a second. Wait, what happened to that bottle? It's, it's definitely a, a strong flavor, a good flavor at that. And before I figure out what I'm actually going to finish off as my drink of the day, I do have a third option. Like I said, something special from North Carolina. Midnight Moon Moonshine Apple Pie Flavor. You see this and you just want to drink it out of the jar, but I, I think I have a little too much class. Not, not a lot too much class, so I'm going to move it into my own personal mason jar. Now, this, is, this one's strong, 100 proof. So uh, they say it tastes really like apple pie, but at 100 proof, I don't believe them. What's the name of that one again? 
This is uh, Midnight Moon Moonshine, apple pie okay. flavor. Interesting. It was hard to find something out of North Carolina. I kept looking and looking. Ooh, that smells really sweet. It looks like a, a moonshine that you'd pick up on the in some backwoods highway from. Well, when I first saw it, I don't know if anyone ever watched. Um, what was it? it was uh, I can't can't think of the name of the show or the guy who was in it anymore. So, <laughs> Margot was Robbie, that about? Margot Robbie was in it for one season, and um, it was a western with Timmy, uh, Timothy Oliphant and Walt Goggins. Deadwood was it? No, it was, was what he did was... after. It was, he did another western after Deadwood, but in it. Uh, not Margaret, uh, Mar she serves him or everybody apple cider moonshine when she's going to murder them. <laughs> <laughs> Do they know that before they get the drink or is it something that, that sort of creeps up on them like the alcohol? It, uh, it, they do not all know that. Um, <laughs> we, we as the audience know it and at the end of the show, um, as opposed to go to jail, he sits down and she and they share a drink and she has the apple cider and he does not. Because wow. He was an old head in the town and et cetera, et cetera. Interesting. Oh, and, and I will say this, surprisingly, it's super sweet, almost cloyingly sweet, but no bite at all. <laughs> um, this is the kind of drink that you were drinking when we were 20, and I don't need my son to find it, because it, it's <laughs> the bottle. He's like, that's the one I like. <laughs>